Wow, guys, can you believe that the year is almost over? You know, this past year, there have been a lot of really great cameras and accessories that have come out, and we've tested them out on this channel, but there have also been some that have fallen a little bit short. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five cameras and accessories that I've purchased that I regret buying. Then we're gonna follow up with five things that I did buy that have been well worth the money. Now, before I get started, I do wanna say that these are products that I actually did buy with our own money. We do get a fair amount of things that are sent to us for review, but that wasn't the case with any of these products. And also, none of these brands paid us to say anything in this video or in past reviews that you might have seen of these products. These are all things that I've purchased and I'm telling you about them based on my own experience with them. So the first product that I regret buying this year is the Peak Design Tripod. So before this, I was using honestly a pretty crappy tripod and it was long overdue for an upgrade. So this year I decided that I finally wanted to try the Peak Design tripod. I actually bought the aluminum version, not the carbon fiber, because this tripod is very expensive. And that was the main reason why I held off on buying it for so long. But this is actually a used tripod. I don't even know if you can tell because it actually is in really great shape. And I bought it used off of the Peak Design website because they do have a section where you can buy pre-owned or used gear at a slight discount. And I recommend doing that whenever you find a product that you really like, but you wanna save some money. But anyway, I bought this tripod earlier this year and I used it for maybe about a month or so. And I really liked it somewhat. I actually really did not like the ball head. That was the main thing I did not like about this tripod. But luckily, I didn't have to wait long for a better tripod to come out because Ulanzi came out with their own version of the Peak Design tripod shortly after. And this tripod, also carbon fiber, a lot cheaper than the Peak Design version, but still pretty pricey. And honestly, I just like it a lot more. And so I have another video going into depth about the differences between the Peak Design tripod and the Ulanzi tripod. So check that video out below. And right after this, I'm actually gonna be filming a tripod comparison video where I talk about four tripod options that are all under $400. So stay tuned for that video if you wanna know more about tripods. The next item that I regret buying this year is the Think Tank Photocross 13 backpack. And so I did another video talking more about this bag and why I replaced my Peak Design backpack with this bag instead. And actually, I really do like this bag a lot, but the thing that I regret about it is that I bought the 13 size. I actually wish that I had scaled up and bought the size that is slightly bigger because my laptop is a 15 inch MacBook Pro and it does not fit in this bag. And at first I thought that that was gonna be okay and that if I ever had to travel with a laptop, I would just use another bag or just carry it separately. But in practice, I'm finding that it's kind of a pain and I wish that I had a bigger version of this bag so that my laptop could fit. And also I am looking at upgrading my laptop probably in the new year. And if I do, then I'm probably gonna go bigger. I don't even know if they make a 15 inch laptop anymore. I think I might have to go for the 16 inch and that is definitely not gonna fit in this bag. And so I love this bag. It's actually held up fairly well over time. I will say that the front, I don't know if you can see it, but this material, it uh, stains pretty easily. And also there's some like scratch marks and I'm not super rough with it, not super gentle either, but um, that's been a little bit disappointing. But other than that, this bag has been so great for carrying all of my mirrorless camera gear. I've traveled to you know Chicago and Las Vegas for work with this bag and it's done a really awesome job of holding all of my Sony mirrorless camera gear. And so I love it, it's super comfortable, much better than the Peak Design Everyday Zip Backpack that I used previously. My main complaint with the Peak Design bag was that it just was too stiff. It just was not comfortable to wear it for long periods of time. And it was missing, you know, like the waist straps. And so I really like that this bag is more comfortable. It is slightly smaller than the Peak Design bag. So it holds all of my mirrorless camera gear without too much extra room. The only thing is, and it does actually have a laptop sleeve, but it's meant for a smaller laptop. And so I wish that I had gotten the bigger version of this bag. The next item that I really regret buying in 2022, uh, I actually don't even have it anymore because I've already returned it, but that is the DJI Osmo Action 3. 
And so that's a camera that I was super excited for back when it was released or announced in September. It was announced on the same day as the GoPro Hero 11 Black. And you guys may have seen my video. I was super pumped for that DJI and more so than the GoPro actually, because I felt that DJI was making really thoughtful upgrades when it came to the user experience, which is something that GoPro hasn't been so great about lately. But the problem with the DJI is that it had a focus issue. And so I don't know if that's still the case. I have heard rumors that that initial batch of cameras that came out had the focus issue. And so if you buy a camera today, then it may not have that issue. But my camera did, and I reviewed the footage of other people that had their cameras fixed or bought newer versions of it. And I still feel like the focus is a little soft. And so considering that I spent money on it, almost $400, I didn't wanna compromise on the focus. And so for me, it wasn't worth keeping it. And so I returned it and yeah, that's the end of that story. However, item number four that I regret buying is actually a GoPro product. And that is the GoPro Hero 11 mini. And so I like the idea behind this camera. I think that GoPro is starting to realize that there are more people that want cameras that are more similar to the Session, which they stopped several models back. And so they shrunk the GoPro down, not significantly, but slightly. And they actually took away all the LCDs, except for one on top anyway. And so they're trying to go back to a smaller form factor, which I do think people appreciate in theory, but in practice, I made another video talking more about this camera and why it's not exactly for me. But in summary, the main things that I don't like about it is the fact that the battery is built in. You can't uh, change it in case it dies. And so I do wish that it was a rechange or a changeable battery anyway. And also there is a little LCD on top so you can see your settings. But in order to change your settings, you have to connect this camera to your phone via the GoPro Quick app. And it's actually not too bad of a process. I thought it was gonna take a lot longer. It's reasonably responsive, but I do wish that there was a way just to have maybe up to five presets built into this camera that you could cycle through just by pressing a button and not having to connect it to a phone. And so those are the two main reasons why I was not super stoked on this camera. And so I'm returning it, I actually have the return box here, so it's gonna go back today and so I will be getting a refund for it and yeah I like the idea of the mini I hope that that they improve on it in future models but right now this is not the camera for me now the fifth and final camera item that I regret buying this year is a Sony lens it is the 28 to 60 millimeter lens. <laughs> Took me a while to remember what this was because I actually forgot that I even bought this. I found it inside of my camera backpack as I was emptying it out and totally forgot that I had it. But I bought this back in August of this year after I had gone on a work trip and I was talking with another videographer friend who shoots Sony and he was using this little lens and it was telling me like, this is such a cheap little lens it fits in your bag, you won't even know it's there, which actually did happen to me. And it's just a nice little backup lens because it has that nice mid-range focal length and it can be really great for shooting video if you have enough light. And so I took his recommendation and I bought it. It was actually under $300. I, again, bought this lens used off of Amazon or refurbished or something like that. It was a little bit cheaper. And so, and it's in great shape. Like it looks like it's brand new or just hardly ever used. I certainly have not used it. And so, yeah, I haven't even used it yet. So this is a slight regret. I do think it's a great little backup lens. It's, you know, pretty cheap, super lightweight, easy to carry and nice to have just in case. But yeah, I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence of if this lens is worth it or not. So now that I've gone over my regret purchases of the year, I wanted to focus in on the positive, the things that I did buy that are really working out well and I don't regret buying them. I actually think that they were a great buy. So the very first one, you guys already know, it's gonna be the GoPro. So this is the GoPro Hero 11 Black. We've done several videos already on this camera because we've had it since October and 
Honestly, I think that this is the best GoPro ever made. Uh, the main reason is, you know, it has the best resolution, blah, 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 of any GoPro. But the main reason is it doesn't have any bugs. Like, we've used this camera on several trips, you know, nonstop, and we have not had any freezing issues. And if you guys have been following our channel for a while, then you know that even though we love GoPro, it's kind of been a love-hate relationship because of those bugs. But this Hero 11 Black, like they finally got it right. This is the camera that I've been waiting for. It is not disappointed and I'm so pleased with it. So no regrets for buying the Hero 11 Black. The next camera that I don't regret buying is the Insta360 X3. So this is the first dedicated 360 camera that we've ever owned. We have not used a previous version of the Insta360 X series. We have used the 1R, which is that modular GoPro style Insta camera. But honestly, I love this X3. I like having a dedicated 360 camera because even when we had that modular Insta360 camera, we mainly just used the 360 lens because that was the camera that we were missing in our setup. And so having a dedicated 360 camera has been been such a game changer. And on this model in particular, it has the biggest LCD of any of the Insta360 X series cameras. Some people might see that as a bad thing because it's another thing on the camera that you can scratch or break, but we don't do any hardcore action with this camera yet. You know, we have a baby, so it's a little bit hard to do some of the things we used to do. So for the way that we use the 360 camera, I'm not too worried about damaging it. And I really like having the bigger LCD because I can very clearly see what I'm gonna shoot or review the footage after it's shot. And so I love that about this camera. And I also really like that me mode, which is where you put this camera on the invisible selfie stick and you just hold it out flat and you can just get this really nice shot where the stick isn't in the frame and it's been really great for getting family videos. And also the X3 does have that single lens mode so you can use it kind of like an action camera. You don't have to shoot in 360 all the time. So I just like the flexibility of this camera. It's not the very best image quality. You know, I did do a comparison between this one and the GoPro. The GoPro still knocks it out of the park when it comes to image quality, but this is still a really great 360 camera if you want a dedicated camera for that. The next item that I don't regret buying this year is the Sony a7 IV. And so this was not a cheap camera. This is by far the most expensive piece of gear that I think we own, but I love this camera so much. And so, you know, there's the a7 IV, there's also the a7S III, which came out slightly before this camera. And a lot of people jumped the gun and got the S3. I waited for the 4 because the S3 is more of a video-centric camera. It has uh, smaller megapixels when it comes to photos. I think there are 12 megapixels. It's 33 megapixels on this camera. And so for me, like I do video here on YouTube, but I'm primarily a still photographer. Like that's how I make the majority of my money. And so I really needed a hybrid camera. And so the a7 IV has been perfect for that. It has this dedicated switch. So now I can have settings for photos or settings for videos, and I can flip between them just with this little button switch here. And ergonomically, this camera feels great. The menu has been redesigned. It's a lot easier to navigate. And of course the picture quality is just fantastic. I, I love this camera. This is the best full frame mirrorless camera that I've ever used and owned and no regrets. All right, we're getting down to the wire here. Two more items to talk about. The next one that I don't regret is the Teleson necklace mount for GoPro. This, it's something I wasn't really sure if I was gonna need. I was actually pretty certain I was gonna return it after I tried it. But the more I use it, the more I really like it. Because when I'm using an action camera in particular, there are many times when I wanna get a POV perspective with both hands free. And you know, when I have that GoPro, it's really easy to use a mini tripod or a selfie stick with it. But if I ever want that POV perspective, then I have to plant it somewhere or get creative about how I hold it, maybe 
put it in my mouth or something like that, which I don't wanna do with an action camera. You don't know where it's been. So having this necklace mount has been really great for being able to mount it quickly and very stably. You can even do some pretty fast paced action and your camera will stay really, really stable. And so I, I love this little mount. I wish it was a little bit easier to pack. Like even though it's flexible, I don't want to bend it out of shape too much because that would be a little bit hard to get it back to this necklace uh, shape but I love having it and I've been using it way more than I expected. And so this has been such a great unexpected GoPro accessory. I don't regret buying this. All right, last item. This is the DJI microphone and I don't regret buying this. Like this is actually the most expensive wireless microphone out there. It's more expensive than the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is its main competition, but I bought this, again, thinking I was gonna try it and not like it and wanna return it, but I've actually really liked DJI's take on a wireless microphone. I think that they've done a really great job of shrinking down the size. It's quite a bit smaller than Rode's version, and it comes with a charging case, which again, is something that Rode is missing. Like, I love Rode, I will continue to use Rode, but I think that DJI made a really compelling microphone system. And for a lot of people, this might actually work out better for you than the Rode. And so, I love the DJI mic. I. You know, Martin is the other person here on this channel. You don't see him as much, but especially over on our travel vlogging channel, which is where we use a lot of this gear that we talk about here on this channel, he's in those videos too. And so I'm working on convincing him that the DJI mic is better, but he still prefers the Rode. And so whenever you've seen videos of the two of us, we've still been using the Rode in those videos because, you know, someone has to compromise, but we still have the DJI mic and it's a microphone that I prefer to use whenever I. I'm filming videos solo, and at the very least, it serves as a really great backup, just in case something happens to the Rode Wireless Go 2, which has had a couple of close calls lately. Like, we usually use it on our GoPro, and sometimes we're not super careful because we're like, oh, GoPro's an action camera. You can drop that and it'll be just fine, which is true for GoPro, not true for the road. So we've dropped it a couple times lately and nearly broken it. And so it is a good idea to have a backup microphone with you. And because the DJI is so self-contained and so portable and small, it's a great microphone to have as a backup just in case, or a primary mic if you don't already have a road. All right, so those were five cameras and accessories that I bought this year that I regret buying, and five things that I bought that I don't regret and I think are actually some of the best products out there in the market. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, I'm not telling you to not buy these products or not try them for yourself, but I'm just giving you my personal experience with them and why some of those things did not work out so well for me. But let me know in the comments if you agree or if you have any regrets this year of things that you've purchased that you think were not so great after all. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.